queries become very valuable when you're able to use them with calculations. So we're going to start by doing some basic math calculations with queries. To do this, we click on Create. We're going to create it in Design. We're going to only use the ASO OSU data. All right. Say, for example, I need to compute the sales tax uh, that, that applies to each transaction. So I could say something like, well, let's put the name of the person. Oh, we don't want to do name. Let's just say amount. And that will give me every amount. And we'll put in transaction date before that. And we'll throw in the ID just so we have that in there. So you can see every ID. Here's the transaction date and the amount. Well, that's great. I want to compute sales tax. And we'll make it easy. We'll say it's 5% uh, of every purchase is, goes to sales tax. So to do that, I need to create a formula. You can type the formula directly in here, or I like to use this little thing up here called Builder under the Design tab. When I click on Builder, what I can do is I can say, open up my database, open up my queries, and click on it. And now I have all the different items in that query. So I can type on those. So what I'm going to do is say, take amount, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.05 to get sales tax. Notice when I click OK, it creates an alias or a name for that. Rather than calling it expression 1, I'm going to call it sales tax. So now when I run it, I get this nice little sales tax, 0 0.7 cents uh, 14, on $14. That's 5%. And it computes it for all of them. Very handy and useful. Now when you use these math functions, you can also use them as part of aggregates. This you have to be a little tricky with. So let's compute the total amount by year. And then the sales tax by year. Well, right now it's grouping by this expression. I don't want that. I want it to actually sum up the expression. So compute those and then sum it up. And then the amount, I want it to sum up by year as well. So I can use this formula inside my aggregate query. So when I click Run, There is the amount of sales, and that's going to be 5% of all my sales. Now, you have to be careful when you do this, when you use basic math functions and aggregate queries. I can't use something like sum all of this information and then another sum. It doesn't know what to do because there's two aggregate queries. Notice this total down here creates that sum. So if I want to use an aggregate query up here, what I do down here is just say, I have an expression. So now it's just saying, hey, do this expression, which is sum all of these. And it will give me the same answer as before. Now, another complication with this. If I put expression and delete sum up here, it doesn't know what to do. Because it needs an aggregate expression to know what to do. Because I told it it's to expect an expression there. So you just have to be careful whatever expression you use up here, and then if you're using totals, that they match or that they, that they work together. So that's basic mathematic function. There's lots of different functions we can do. So let's go ahead and delete this. We'll delete amount. And then we'll come in, and we're going to build something else. We're going to do a little bit more complicated expression this time. We want to figure out what's the average size of sale. So we're going to do average size of sale. Now to compute the average size of a sale, we need to know the total amount and then divide that by the number of transactions. So what we can do is create the total amount, which we're going to need to sum. And I'm going to click in here so I don't make a mistake. Go to the query that we have and put in amount. And notice it, how it words that so that it's very specific. We're going to take that sum, and then we're going to divide it by how many transactions. And we'll count the ID for that. So again, this is the alias. Average size of sale is the sum of all the transactions divided by how many transactions there are. That puts it in there. Now notice I can't have it on group by. I can't sum average or that. I need to list it as an expression because I'm doing it by year. I click View. We can see that the average size of transaction is decreasing. In 2010, it was $444 for P-card transactions. 
down to 288 in 2014. Now, notice I might not want all of these variables over here. I want to round it to the nearest penny. I can do that. I can come in here and say, go to Builder, and there's a function called round. So I'm just going to put that whole amount inside of round. Oh, and then I want it to two decimal places. I have to use all the arguments. Click OK, run it, and you can see that nice rounding to two decimal places. Now rounding is a tricky one because, or a special one, because you can do it by rounding the actual data, which will physically change it, or you can put input masks on there to, if you go to properties, you can then say how many decimal places do you want it to show. If you use properties, realize that it doesn't change the data. So if I referred to this query in a future query with round, it's going to not have all those extra digits. But if I do just change the format, those digits will still be there. You just won't see them um, in the display when you run the query. So those are just a few examples. You can look in Builder. There are all sorts of different functions you can do. There are built-in functions, just like in Excel. Most of the things in Excel can be done in here. Uh, I find it very helpful if, if I'm not sure if something can be done. Just go to Google and type in Microsoft Access, can you do blah in a query. And you'll be able to find a lot of creative and, and cool ways to do that. But just to summarize, remember you have to be very careful when you're running a mathematical function and you're using totals that those two line up. That's a very important. And then when you run your functions, it's, you make sure you get your spelling and everything correctly. And to do that, I usually use Builder just to make sure that it's done easy and, and understandable.